Hey, welcome back, folks, to my channel. Um, let me see. Over the weekend, I did lift, and let me tell you, it was really exciting. Exciting because it gave me memories of things that I did when I was younger, and things not to do, and things that I missed out on. So, check me out. So, first of all, when I, as soon as I uh, am ready to drive. I click on the app on so that I'm in driving mode and then I get a request after I get a request I tap it and then after I tap it it lets me know the person and how far of the distance that I'm going to or where I'm picking up that person so I picked this person up maybe about um, five blocks away from my house and it was a Mexican guy and he had the little stick that holds the um, paper when you're gonna perform uh, I don't know what it's called but you, where you're reading the paper like say if you're playing a violin the sheet paper or sheet book so he was carrying one of those and an instrument I don't even know what instrument he was playing but anyway he was telling me that um, they're going to the studio and he's gonna be playing some music because he goes to different bars and and um, performs and I just happened to ask him you know what kind of music does he play he said he plays everything he plays salsa he plays uh, hip-hop whatever the uh, gen genre is wherever they're going whatever they want to hear that's what he plays and that's pretty cool because that means he gets to learn about different kind of music and we can hear, I should have asked him <laughs> the name of his group or his, uh, you know, so I could find out maybe he has some music on YouTube or something. I don't know. Maybe I have to check that out later on. But he was pretty cool, and I picked him up and dropped him off somewhere off of Vermont. And then he gave me memories of when I used to drive from Vermont. So anyway, and I was like, oh, yeah, you probably was one of my passengers. I don't know. So anyway, after I dropped him off, then I received another request and got a request from this lady um she was black and she happened to be going to her daughter's house to braid her hair and i was like oh that's cool would have been nice to know her back in the days when i actually had needed someone to braid my hair but now since i have dreadlocks i don't need um someone to braid my hair so we on the way to drop her off we had to stop at the hair place so she can buy the hair and the funny thing about that was the apartment building right next door off of Crenshaw and Slauson, I used to live there. And then as soon as we pulled up at the at the beauty supply, I happened to tell her about a, a ticket that I got one day because um, I was parked right in front of the uh, beauty supply. And I had, uh, first of all, it was in the handicap or the disabled parking where you're not supposed to park. But hey, I was getting out my car. And I said, I'm just going to run into the cleaners, get my clothes, and come back out. And for some reason, it slipped my mind on where I parked. So I went in the beauty supply. When I came out, I had a ticket on my car. Um, and yes, it was pretty high. I think it was like a hundred and some dollars. I said, okay, never again in life will I park in no handicap and won't do any things that will give me no tickets because I like to stay away from stuff like that. So, um, after I dropped her off, uh, of course, I always ask everyone, would you like an Avon book? And she was like, yes, I love Avon. And she was telling me their other job she used to buy from somebody, but now since she got another job, so she kind of like lost. I said, oh, well, this is wonderful. Hopefully, uh, we'll stay in contact. And I didn't even get her phone number, which I should have gotten a number. Every time I give somebody an Avon book, I need to get their number. That way, I can contact them to find out if they want to order from that book. If not, they might want another book later on down the line. So that was pretty good. Then um, I got another request. I couldn't tell you where it is because I just can't seem to remember right now. Then I picked up uh, this white guy. He was going to Culver City, and he was drinking some coffee. And the funny thing about that was when he first got in the car, I was like, uh, what are you drinking? And he says, oh, I'm drinking some coffee. I said, okay, good, because I know somebody that actually drinks beer while they're driving around. That's just ridiculous. 
So anyway, he was like, oh, no, it's coffee. He said, I'm a bartender. I said, oh, okay. He said, yeah, I'm the one that gets folks drunk, and you guys pick them up later on after I have to kick them out the bar. I said, oh, God, that ain't me because I'm not going to be driving after 11 o'clock. No, not me. So he seemed to be pretty cool. So I just had told him, you know, have a good day after uh, I dropped him off. Then, when I was actually in Culver City, after I dropped him off, I picked up this uh, Caucasian girl, and she was telling me that she was going to public school. And I said, I heard of that. What is it? I said, is it a restaurant? She said, yeah. I said, oh, okay, because I see one every day on Ventura Boulevard. She was like, yeah, I'm going there to meet a friend. I said, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. I said, I need to go there. I didn't realize it was a restaurant. I thought it was just like a hangout spot for adults. She was like, no, it's a restaurant. So I said, okay, I think I'm going I'm to go there one day. So I dropped her off at downtown LA. Then I was like driving around. Well, I was driving towards the freeway and all of a sudden I got another request. I'm like matter of seconds. I had to go back around the block right where I dropped her off. I picked up these two guys, two Caucasian guys, and dropped them off um, downtown a little farther downtown LA off of um, Alameda and the place they went to is called 82. Now it, what 82 is, is um, a, a bar that you can play video games. It gives you memories of if you remember how to play Centipede, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, you know all the games that we had back in the 80s when I was growing up and I used to go to Westwood World, Westworld in uh, UCLA, Westwood area so he was like saying, they were like saying, oh, yeah, we're going to go there and have some drinks and play video games. I said, oh, is that what that is? He was like, yeah. I said, so before he got out of the car, I said, well, make sure you play Miss Pac-Man because that's what they used to call me. Some people still call me that. And he was like, oh, I will. He said, matter of fact, that's the only game I know how to play anyway. I said, oh, good. Well, you guys enjoy yourself. So then after they got out the car, oh, and one thing I wanted to let you guys know about, the ride cost two sixty two. dollars So after that, I got a $5 tip. Woo-woo! So that's pretty cool about that. Then when I got, when I dropped them off, I got another request. And I picked up these four Asian kids from um, the Arts District. And they happened to be coming from a little uh, bar that had music and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. And one of the girls said, yeah, it's happy hour, so that's the best time to go when the prices are half price. I said, oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> but that's nice that uh, I'm learning about the different things that people do in the art district, eating, drinking, and um, hanging out and watching, um, watching different art exhibits, too. You know, they have a lot of things going on for young folks. Well, can't really say young, but it's everybody's, actually. So, I got a $3 tip for that. Woo-woo! So, as I was uh, taking them wherever they were going, we were passing through 5th um, Street and Central, which is like the home of all the homeless people. You see the tents. Some is too, it's some place down there is real dirty. It's a lot of drug-infested people. And it's just really sad to see all these people. And he happened to be telling one of his friends that he used to have a business in one of those streets, the business was really nice. It was in a loft, but, you know, when you're getting off at night, you don't want to be coming across nothing like that, so he had to get away from all that. So he said he moved a little farther west, which was a lot better. I, he said, you, yeah, you, you know, as soon as you get past Los Angeles Street going westbound, it's like a whole nother city. I said, yeah, it is. They done, you know, remodeled, it's painted, it's cleaner. It's a lot of people out there. Um, they need to just clear them out maybe put them all in a in a place where um it could be an apartment building just for all the homeless people and teach them and train them but you know that's a whole nother subject so then um after i dropped them off uh at bunker hill then i picked up this hispanic guy dropped him off in uh, huntington park and he was pretty cool he's kind of quiet but I was asking him about, you know, if he, because I happened, happened to pass by Pacific. And Pacific is a street I know personally because I used to drive a bus down there. That on Sundays they have the lowriders. And I was telling him, yeah, on Sundays they have the lowriders come out here. And he was like, oh, really? 
I said, yeah. I said, um, you know, do you have an Instagram? He said, nope. He said, he doesn't deal with social media at all. I said, oh, man, you need to get in the loop. He was like, it's too much drama on Facebook. I said, no, it's only drama when you allow it. When you put people and you do things and you say things about folks or whatever, that's what makes the page bad. I mean, if you're a positive person and you're not doing anything wrong, then I suggest you have a Facebook. Why? Because for one, videos like this one, I share them on my social media and people can look at them. You don't have to have a YouTube account to actually look at videos. You can watch them on Facebook now. So, once again, um, I kind of explained to him about that and he was like, oh, okay, thank you. And he was, you know, pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of, uh, I don't know, I'm not even going to say it, but he was a... Uh, he was a, a guy. He said he went to L.A. high school, as a matter of fact. So, um, hopefully I'll see you again one day. So, then again, I picked up this Nigerian guy. And it was, I picked him up, like, off of Washington and Crenshaw. And he was tall. I mean, he looked like he was about seven feet, but he's probably, like, six five. And I wasn't too sure with the address because I was confused. At one side of Washington, they had one address. So I said, well, maybe it's inside the gates. And sure enough, maybe it was because him and his brother was walking out towards Washington. I said, okay, this is him. So he gets in the car and he's telling me about his stories of different neighborhoods that he lived in. And he's from Los Angeles, but his family is in Nigeria. So he was just basically telling me about the different areas in Culver City and uh, other areas that he lived in. And you can't believe how it was back in the days and I didn't even realize he was as old as I am. I thought he was a little bit older. But anyway, he said he was going back to Nigeria to spend time with his family that he hasn't seen in 13 years. And I hope that goes well for you. Maybe you want to bring some back out here or maybe get everybody to move out here to USA. Who knows? But, you know, it's always good to go back and visit folks while you can afford it to go back on the airline. So then I picked up... Uh, this. Oh, by the way, I dropped him off at the airport. So, that was a good little uh, ride, I should say. So, then I picked up this um, guy and this girl from those apartments over there off of Sentinella in Culver City. I can't even think of the name of them. But it was like a whole little city over there by the Honda dealer. And I wanted to move over there. And he was saying, oh, he loves it. And I said, yeah, I love it too. I just wish I can afford to live over there. For the simple fact, the water, the swimming pools look like you're in uh, on the island somewhere because there's so many trees and mountains over there. So anyway, he was like, yeah, he, but he just had so many issues with other apartments. He said he stayed in one hotel downtown, not downtown, in Koreatown. And every day he wanted to, uh, well, he wanted to pay them up front, you know, like a week's worth. He was like, no, you got to pay right now. And he was like, the guy said he kept coming in kicking on the door early in the morning I said you know that's just disrespectful you could tell when uh, uh, he is prejudiced maybe he just doesn't care about any other nationality than whatever he is probably Korean I don't know but um, I'm glad the guy is able to find something else because he was like different places he looked rent is like four and five thousand dollars I said yeah you probably went to that apartment on Vermont and Wilshire that just opened up he said, yeah, he said it was like $5,000 a month and 8000 he had to put down. I said, that shit is ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's just basically to keep all, every nationality out except for the Korean people. To me, that's what it seems like. But not prejudice, just, you know, just wish that everyone can all be equal. So then I picked up um, this black girl with uh, a weave down to her back. It looked like it was almost touching the ground. So when I got to her address, I was kind of confused because I made a left turn. It was in Torrance. Come to find out, I seen the traffic coming at me. And I said, oh my God, this is not the right way. So I turned back around and then I decided, well, let me call her and find out where she is. So she said she'll be out in a minute. So once she came out, she was like, hurry up, let's go. I said, okay. I said, well, I need a destination. She said, oh, we're just going around the corner. 
just so I can get away from my boyfriend because she he didn't want her going out and she was going out with her friends. I said, yeah, I remember those days when I was about 21 years old. My boyfriend didn't want me going out with my friends. But then again, there's a lot of times we were all going out together because that's just what we did. She was like, yeah. And then all of a sudden she got a phone call. And then it was real quick and easy. I was real quiet after that. Dropped her off a few blocks away at a gas station. She got out. Now, since I didn't have a destination code in there when we left the area, as soon as I got to mobile gas station, I put the address in. And I clicked dropped off so that they know so I can get paid. Otherwise, I ain't going to be able to get paid if there's no destination code in there. So she got the car. Then, um, oh, by the way, I didn't get no tip. <laughs> Probably because she was angry at her dude. I, I don't know what the situation was. So then uh, I was getting on the freeway because I figured, hey, I'm going to come back going north towards either Westwood or, you know, somewhere off of La Sienica, Culver City. I got another request. Uh, got picked. I picked up this um, girl. I don't know if she was black or Hispanic or I don't know. She was pretty with like blue eyes. So uh, mixed girl. Picked her up from Walmart over there off of Inglewood. Dropped her off in Huntington Park. She wasn't very talkative, probably because she was tired. I don't blame her working eight hours, and getting off. She said this is her early time. She gets off. Usually she gets off at twelve, and I'm like. That's like too late for me. But anyway, I got a $2 tip. So before she got the car, I asked her, you know, would you like an Avon book? She said, is it free? And I was like, oh, of course it is. Also has my my website on there and my cooking um, video. Oh, and you know what? It doesn't have cooking, but it does have my Miss Keisha Pack. And this is the Avon book. And this is what my website looks like. It says... Going somewhere and tired of those mosquitoes chasing you, then order your Skin So Soft bath oil today. And it has my website, and it also has my YouTube channel. So that way they can, you know, check me out if they're interested. So, and I got a $2 tip from her, so that was pretty cool. And I just want to let y'all know that um, that was 12 rides. And every time I do my lifting, I try to do eight hours worth which is usually it'll build up depending on if you're sitting in traffic and the distance of how far you go. That usually shows uh, how much you're getting paid. So once again, like my page. Hey, you like my little design back there? That's a, a Star Trooper from Star Wars. And by the way, that's a kite. <laughs> I bought it from the Dollar Tree because I wanted to do something a little different, a little background. And I said, well, you know, I want to be different about it. So once again, like my page. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll put my link down below where you can sign up to either be a driver or you could be a passenger. You get um, $20 worth of $50 worth of free rides. And if you sign up to be a driver right now, you can get $500, I believe. Yeah, you get $500 just for signing up along with the rest of the money you make on your own. So, excuse me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like everyone else, share on your social media. Once again, do a lift, a day, have a good one.